the astronauts to read out the gravitational effect of those planets. Hi, I'm Alicia and this is NASA Now. We all know that water is needed to sustain life and for many years our scientists have been searching for water throughout the solar system. Our guest today will explain where they have found it in abundance. Throughout the solar system, throughout the universe, water is one of the most plentiful compounds in existence. Stay tuned to hear about the very latest in water detection in space. But first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. <laughs> In an exciting announcement, NASA Administrator and former astronaut Charles Bolden revealed that NASA is ready to enter the next phase of deep space exploration with the development of the Space Launch System. The system is comprised of a giant heavy-lift liquid-fueled rocket and can be adapted for different missions. This new heavy-lift rocket will be America's most powerful since the Saturn V rocket that carried Apollo astronauts to the moon. It will launch humans to places no one has gone before, such as asteroids, Mars, and other deep space destinations. This will work in combination with the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle already under construction. Now, let's take a look at the past. July 24, 1969. History was made when Commander Neil Armstrong took the first step on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Twenty minutes later, he was followed by astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin. While on the moon, the two astronauts deployed experimental equipment and collected samples of the lunar surface. After the Apollo missions in the 1960s and 70s, scientists characterized the soil and rocks on the moon as bone dry. In the last few years, however, several different missions to the moon have shown us it is not the dry, desolate place we once thought, but it contains water and many other secrets scientists are just beginning to unlock. To help us gain a better understanding of the moon is ceramics engineer and senior scientist, Dr. Edwin Etheridge. Hello, Dr. Etheridge. What can you tell us about water on the moon? There's a little bit of water all over the moon, but it's probably not practical to extract that kind of water. Any water on the moon finds its way down to the poles, and once a water molecule is at the pole, it'll get trapped. It'll, it'll attach to the cold surfaces, and the water is there, there at the poles for a billion years, or until we extract it. So how much water do scientists think there is on the moon? It's evident there are large concentrations of water at the South and North Poles. There is so much water, in fact, that one scientist speculated that the quantity of water is equivalent to launching a shuttle a day for a thousand years. Where did the water come from? Just as we have water on the Earth, scientists have speculated that the same sources brought water to the moon. On the Earth, we, we got a lot of our water from comets and also from volcanic eruptions. And likewise, the moon was subjected to impacts by comets, and in the early years it also had volcanoes. How could you extract the water? The um, experiment we call the moon in a bottle. We have a quartz vessel, and we have lunar soil simulant with about 2% water. And we put this inside of a, a standard uh, microwave oven, and we hooked a vacuum up to the uh, tip here. We cooled the whole uh, vessel down with liquid nitrogen, and turned the microwave on, and after two minutes, all of the water had sublimed out and gone out and gotten trapped in a coal trap external to the microwave. And the interesting thing is, all the water came out below the freezing point of water. When you have a vacuum, the water ice will sublime and turn to gas, and it totally removes all the water, even at a low temperature of zero degrees C. Could this same process be used anywhere else? Yeah, what, microwave water extraction would work anywhere. It would work on the moon, it would work on Mars, and if there's water in an asteroid, it would work on an asteroid. On the moon, we would probably drill a hole, say a one-inch diameter hole like Apollo did, and then run a, an antenna down into the moon, and energy would be uh, emitted from the bottom of the uh, probe and heat the soil, then the water vapor would then come out the borehole. 
what would the water be used for and why don't we just bring up our own supply? The water from the moon or Mars is very valuable. It represents mass that we do not have to transport off the earth because it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars per pound for each pound of mass. Uh, and water is, in particular is very useful. It, uh, it can be used for habitation, water to drink, can split it into hydrogen and oxygen so we have oxygen to breathe. But it's also very valuable as a uh, rocket propellant, hydrogen and oxygen rock, rock, rocket propellant. Also, uh, water is a very good radiation protection material. What are your hopes for future missions? I would love to see us go back to the moon because there's many things to do on the moon. There's much science to be obtained from the moon. And the moon would be a perfect staging area for learning how to operate in space and building the kind of technology it would take to go to Mars. Faster, faster. And take me air, we're gonna crash. Searching for the answers. I gather they go through the looking glass. That's the reason. Our dreamers' eyes we gaze into a sense of purpose no by you. Like finding water on the moon. Did you know that NASA scientists discovered water ice on an asteroid? The asteroid known as 24 Themis is 193 kilometers wide and resides in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. Scientists tell us that impacts from asteroids, remnants of the Big Bang, have been the primary source for the distribution of water to planets and their satellites throughout the universe, even to our own planet Earth. Now you know. Hey teachers and students, here's a chance to create your own water extraction experiment. Check this out. Dr. Etheridge has provided all the information you need to extract water from sand. Just visit the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus and you are on your way to conducting a real-world science experiment. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next time when we get a glimpse of the future of climate observations from space. See you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.